and we're starting a new series, and I'm very excited about this. It's called Minecraft. And I'm going to have you repeat a phrase over and over again, and I'm going to explain to you why. It's Minecraft, it renew your mind, change your life. Renew your mind, you change your life. Is there any part of you you want to change? And can I tell you right now, there's so many things. As we ended 2020, we're now in the beginnings of 2021 that are out of our control. We can't really control what's happening in the world, in culture, but let me tell you what you can control. That is your mind. And you may have a lot of mess in your mind, but you could manage your mind mess. And you renew your mind, you change your life. Now, I'm going to have you say that quite a bit. Now, look, I don't want to irritate you when I have you repeat, but there is a reason. Like, for example, if Becky's going to the store, I go, babe, can you get half and half? She'll repeat it back. You want me to get half and half? Yeah, get half. So you're saying you want, and I'm like, my goodness, yes, just get the half and half. And so I'm not doing the, uh, the repeat for, to aggravate you, but watch me. I, we're going to say it, and it's going to go from our intelligence into our heart and our spirit And you're going to begin to have an aha moment because some of you have bought one of the biggest lies ever that you have to live the rest of your life in this condition. Maybe you have thought I was born that way or something happened. The situation has now defined me and I'm in a cul-de-sac of hell. I've got great news. Renew your mind. Change your life. Renew your mind. Change your life. Nope. Renew your mind, you will change your life. So you're going to say it with me. Say, renew your mind. mind. Do it again. Do it with online presence. And you keep saying that, you'll see in this next month, any area, and I want you to think about this right now, any area that you want to change, you have to renew your mind. You change your thinking, you change your living. Change your thinking, change your living. Renew your mind, renew your life. Now, let me tell you something. With thousands of things we do every day, every moment, we do without thinking about them. Because we have mental patterns. I put on a black shirt. I put on these khaki pants. I put on these uh, tennis shoes. There are times you could tell I don't think about my dress because I could. <laughs> Why are all the women laughing? <laughs> the, the guys are going, what? <laughs> you know. And you say, how do you know you don't think? Because I could wear the same thing every week. And my wife goes, babe, you wore that three weeks in a row. It's like, well, it's clean, you know. She says, why do you have all these shirts? I said, I don't know. I like this shirt. And can I say, we do so many things. The way we respond, the way we react, the way I don't get up here thinking, well, I'm going to use my right hand, then my left hand. No, it just comes consciously, sometimes subconsciously. But when you renew your mind, you will literally change your life forever. Renew Renewed mind, changed life, and that's what I want. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to one of the greatest verses in the entire scripture. I memorized this when I was 20 years old, and it's been in my mind and my thinking for a long time. And it is Romans chapter 12, and we're going to look at verses 1 and 2. And so I so want to change our lives, but it starts with our thoughts. If you want to change the way you think, you'll change your life. And you say, well, I believe. Can I tell tell you right now, right believing is connected to right thinking. You will never believe big and think small. You will never think big and think mediocre. We're going to change the way we think. Therefore, we're going to change the way we live. Now, let me give you some context on the book of Romans, probably the greatest book that Paul ever wrote. And the first three chapters shows that the whole world needs righteousness. Righteousness is required. He begins to say, chapter 1, the ending verses, it's like the world forgot to take their medicine. And they begin to do things that were off. Chapter 2, the Jewish people were doing the same thing. They're saying, well, we're Jewish. We go to the synagogue. We've been circumcised. And we're not like those who do not believe in God. Chapter 3, Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That we need 
righteousness. Righteousness is required. Then chapters 4 to 8, some of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible, he says, did Abraham, did he receive righteousness or justification through works or through faith? And the Bible says he wasn't righteous because he was circumcised. He was righteous because he believed. Then we go to chapter 5, where sin about, come on, wherever your life is being destroyed right now, grace is much more abounding. Are you with me? And can I say the very goal of this series is that you would be able to discover your purpose. Everyone here, online watching, you have a purpose. If you have breath, there's a purpose for your life, and you can become the man, the woman, the individual that God created you to be. And I don't know about you, I am not going to die a cheaper version of myself. I don't want to be a cheap imitation. I want to be the original Jew that God created. Are you with me? Chapter 6, 7, and 8, again, it's righteousness received. Then chapters 9, 10, and 11, righteousness can be rejected. Now watch me. Watch me here. The number one enemy to Jesus' righteousness or Christ's righteousness is not sin. If you have sin in your life, don't get shamed or discouraged over it. That's what Jesus died for. The number one enemy of God's righteousness is when we become self-righteous. And we cannot submit to God's righteousness. So the way we reject God's righteousness is trying to be right in and of ourselves. And chapter 12 is incredible. He says, therefore, in the therefore is there, because of all that he's written, that righteousness is required, righteousness is received, righteousness can be rejected, but today righteousness is going to be revealed. And here we go. We're going to begin to read verses 1 and 2 in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living spirits sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I like what one version says, your spiritual form of worship. And here goes, key verse for this series, renewed mind, change life, renewed mind, change life, renewed mind, change life, renewed mind changed life. I know some of you are getting irritated, but I'm going to irritate you enough where it gets out of your thinking into your heart, and then that's when you'll be transformed. Amen. Amen. Renewed mind change life. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why do you need a new mind? That you may prove the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. That we'd be able to discern, that we'd have an intuition of God's acceptable, good, and perfect will. I now want to go to the Passion Translation. And I want to read from there. It says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of culture around you. I just want to stop and read that again. Dear God, 2020... In 2021, as a pastor of a church in California, I think I got at least 50 emails and text messages every week to wear a mask, not wear a mask, get a vaccine, don't get a vaccine, vote for this one, don't vote for that one. This one's the Antichrist. This one is the Savior. And all of a sudden, a pink, I, I didn't even know how to think anymore. And I thought, you know what? I'm done with opinions. I want to begin to know what does God think about my life in this situation. And so I love this. It says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of culture around you, but be inwardly, think of that word, it doesn't come from the outside. Let me just say, it doesn't come from the outside. This is toothpaste, all right? This change comes from the inside, inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will, and you will live a beautiful life satisfying the... uh, and perfect in his eyes. Another one, go to this one, the New Living Translation. I want to read this. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. Can we say that with each other? By changing. How many of you would like to become a totally new, different person? 
What if I told you you could, in one year, you could change your life forever, renew your mind, you'll change your life. How many of you know someone in your family that they squeeze the toothpaste in the middle or in the tight, just every way? I don't like that. I, I start from the bottom. Then I, I, I start, I, I can always tell when, Be- I don't know why she does this. She has her own toothpaste because of this very reason. <laughs> she squeezes from the middle and it goes all over. She, she has her uh, vanity. I have my la- uh, sink and lavatory. She will come, I think she does it just to make me renew my mind. <laughs> I think she thinks that this is Becky's desire, I mean, idea of love. That we would order one dish and we would eat off the same plate. Well, I, I eat too much to share my food. All right. And the other one is, is that she could use my toothpaste and squeeze it all over the place. So I'll go, babe. Did you use my uh, toothpaste? And I don't know why she does it. She, she'll lie at first. She'll go, oh, no, I didn't. I go, yes, you did. I said, unless Satan manifested in human form this morning, because I don't squeeze from the middle. And, oh, she goes, oh, yeah, I forgot. And said, I don't mind you using my toothpaste, but can you squeeze from the bottom? And then can you put the cap back on? And if you got toothpaste all over, can you wipe it off? Now, can I say right now, a lot of us are like this tube of toothpaste and the pressure, the stress, the uncertainty, the ambiguity, the demon forces are trying to squeeze the very life of God out of us and where the squeeze comes is from the outward and there are two words that we need to pay attention to. It says, do not be conformed. Now, if you think of that word conformed and transformed, they both have a same word, form. What is shaping you? What is molding you? What is direct? What is squeezing you? Why is it that the outside forces get to me so easily? Can I tell you right now, I've been born again. I am on my way to heaven. Years ago, I was on the 101 going south. And if LA would be not a good place, I turned around and started going to Santa Barbara. Can someone give Jesus a hand wave? Come on. So I change my direction, but I want you to get this. I'm on my way to heaven, but I don't want to live like hell on the earth. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm going to heaven, but I don't want to live like hell on the earth. And I'm done being squeezed at everything that comes in my life. You may have heard that one of the neighbors cut down my tree. Man, that toothpaste got squeezed in the middle and it's all over. I'm telling you, Becky and I were so fired up. We called the, the property management company. We contacted neighbors and all of a sudden, I, I'm just getting, how many of you have something you're like, I'm getting drained thinking about this. How many of you know a situation or a person that drains you? I mean, you'll go to a Starbucks in Santa Paula just to avoid them. You <laughs> went, oh, they're there, I'm going on another one. I guess it's Pete's coffee today. Everyone say, renew your mind. Say, change your life. Now, get this. I want you to get this. The word conform means to be shaped with. That the situations of your life and my life are shaping us more than the God who is within us. And the God within us, and you please, please get this. In these verses, he says, I beseech you because of the mercies of God. And that's what saves us. The very mercy of God. To offer, get this, to offer your body. Is a living sacrifice. You see, we are special people. We have a body. But we have a spirit. And it says, which is your reasonable service. Get this, another translation says, which is your spiritual form of worship. You cannot even really worship. Worship's not music. It's of the spirit. God is spirit and we worship in our spirit. And so my spirit got born again. My spirit got recreated. But my body stayed the same. And let me tell you what else stayed the same was my mind. You see, in an instant in Louisiana, my spirit was awakened to the beauty and the goodness of God. But my mind was not saved. You see, my heart got saved, but my mind is still being.
getting saved. And what he's saying here is that don't be conformed. Don't let your mind, like this tube of toothpaste, be squeezed the very life of God out of your mind. And I want to say for anyone who may be charismatic, Pentecostal, can I tell you, some people play down the mind. Well, I'll say the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And God gave us a mind. And in our mind is our thinking, our intelligence, our will, our personality. And I want you to know when you begin to renew your mind, you begin to get the personality that you were destined to have. Not the one your mom told you, not the one the ex told you, not because of the situation. I want to be who God created me to be. Are you with me on that? And so I want you to get this. He says, do not be conformed. In other words, that Greek word is pattern. Don't pattern your thinking after a world that, number one, wants to approach everything in a secular way. Meaning taking God out of the picture and you kind of become the master of your own universe. Another thing he said, don't be squeezed without even thinking the way they think. Well, what is another way the world thinks? They think it this way. I see it I believe it. That's not how God thinks. God says you believe it, you will see it. Are you with me? How does the world, what do they do with like this tube of toothpaste? They say this when there's a a plague, when there's an epidemic, when there's a hurricane, that it was an act of God. No, that wasn't an act of God. Because you know what makes you get born again? When you realize God is not your enemy, he is for you, he's not against you. And you begin to turn around and change your mind and give your mind and your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Say it with me. Say, renew your mind. Say, change your life. Now, say, conform. Say, transform. No, I love that word. That means that you're shaped. Get this, that you're shaped and you're molded from the inside out. Now, get this. The Greek word for transformed is metamorpho. Metamorpho. It's where we get our English word metamorphosis. So, what it's saying that when you become a believer, your spirit is totally recreated. However, when you begin to renew your mind, you experience a metamorphosis. And that would be like a caterpillar who begins to wrap itself in its own silk the silk begins to harden but then one day that shell begins to break and a beautiful butterfly is created no I'm not just a better version of Jude I got born again I am a new creation you do not see caterpillars flying from tree to tree and my goodness I have never seen a butterfly crawling on the ground some of of us believe in Jesus, but we're still living an old creation lifestyle. If God has meant us to fly, then we're going to fly. Come on. Are you with me on that? Now, in the 80s, they had a song by a guy, and it was called bullfrogs and butterflies. I've been born again. So like a tadpole that transforms into a frog or a caterpillar that transforms into a butterfly. When you and I get this, when you renew your mind, you change your life. But you not only please hear it, hear it, hear it. This is so unbelievable. If your life right now is just mediocre, then I'm saying stop acting like a caterpillar because you could begin to do things that you never dreamt were possible because Jesus Christ wants you to renew your mind and transform your life. Can you say amen? Now, this is what I want to begin to do. I want to give you a few ways on how to renew your mind, all right? How to renew your mind. And first of all, I just want to stop, please. Don't let anyone bring up your past, who they think you are, and put the squeeze on. Because I'm saying that is the devil. And I really, really believe this. This is a word for someone that's in this room or online that the enemy and life itself is trying to reshape you. Your past experience can no longer define you. How you think about that past experience will define you more than the experience itself. And if you give one year to renewing your mind, my friend, I'm telling you, you will not recognize the person that you will become. You will not recognize 
recognize yourself. Now, I want to say something. You see, I thought, I really thought this. I thought if we would come to church, read our Bibles a little, pray just a little, that we would renew our mind. And many of us have been left disappointed. And we even may think or say things, well, I tried it, but it didn't work. I tried Jesus. I tried the Bible. And can I say, renewing your mind, you could come to church, pray a little bit, just read a little bit of your Bible and still not renew your mind. And if our mind is not renewed, then our life will not be changed. And it leaves us disappointed. And we want to give up and we get frustrated. But renewing our mind, I used to think, I used to think, you know what, the first three years of my uh, faith in Christ, I'm going to renew my mind and then I won't have to do it anymore. 41 years later, I'm still renewing my mind. It is an everyday conscious decision. And so I I want you to do something with me. You're going to say it again. Say, renew my mind. mind. Change my life. And I want you to make an active decision right now. That you're going to work... You're going to put some effort into it, and you're going to begin to renew your mind. How you do it? Number one, write this down. Become aware of your thoughts. Become aware of your thoughts. Okay, I'll say it another way. Pay attention to what you're thinking about. So, you know, I may have told you today or last week, one of the neighbors cut down my tree. (laughs) And so yesterday, we bought two trees that were bigger than the one they cut down. And we hired a landscaper who came and dug up the old tree, the stump that was in the ground, and planted the new tree. Becky's speaking in Orange County. So this morning I woke up and the first thought in my mind, normally when I wake up, I try to think these words, thank you. Thank you, not today. Not today. I went right to the window and I looked out. Thought, I wonder if those thugs mess with my trees during the night. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm I'm gritting my teeth. And I'm thinking, man, if they touch my trees, I'm going to open up a big Costco economy size of Louisiana. Come after you. Are you with me, somebody? And then all of a sudden, I couldn't even think about the Lord Jesus. Because I'm thinking about the tree. And then all of a sudden Romans 12 comes to me. Because we're in Romans 12. That says do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. But be transformed. And you know what it says in Romans? Do not pay evil for evil but give good to evil you conquer evil by good and I thought I don't want to think that right now I'm enjoying having these revengeful thoughts Now, come on, how many of you love to talk about it and talk about it, then talk about it, then talk about it, then think about it, then talk about it again, then you talk about it, then you think about it? Do you know anyone like that? Please don't raise your hand. Everyone say, become aware of your thoughts. Please hear me. Your life will follow your thinking. If you're thinking about use mediocre, your life will be mediocre. Can I say, very rarely, I want you to watch me, very rarely will I speak negative of my ministry. One time I preached at a big conference, and honestly, it was awful. Not one person got saved. Even Christ didn't. I mean, he walked out the room. (laughs) And so, Chad Veach was there. He was hosting me, the pastor of the Zoe Church. He said, no, Pastor Jude, we're walking to the green room. How do you think that message went? Do you think it was good? I said, Chad, my goodness. It was living. It was active. It was powerful. It divided between the soul and the spirit. That was a powerful message because I read the Bible. He goes, really? Now, a year later, he asked me again. I said, yes, it was awful. He said, well, why did you say it was living and active? I said, because the Bible says the Bible is living and active and powerful. And I says, when I fail at something and my mind is open and it's vulnerable, the last thing I'm going to do is have a lesser opinion of me than God has of me. And remember the 12 spies, they only had two, Joshua and Caleb, that came back with a good report. The other 10 said this, we were grasshoppers in our 
our own eyes, in our own perspective, in our own opinion. Thus we became in the opinion of the enemy. Your opinion of you will be exactly the devil's opinion of you. And that's why I did not go down that road that day. I paid attention to my thought. And I wanted to badmouth my preaching, but I thought, uh, uh, not today, devil. That word is still powerful enough to send you right back to hell. Come on. Are you with me? So everyone say, become aware of your thoughts. This is the next one. Become aware of God's thoughts. The goal of Christianity is, how many of you ever have a bad thought? Come on, I just told you one I had this morning. I didn't say, thank you, Jesus. I said, where's the tree, people? Come on. The goal, watch me, the goal is not to empty your head of every bad thought. Because if you empty your head of every negative thought, your thoughts become empty. Hear me. Alien forces and passions and desires are attracted to empty places. Jesus told a story that they drove seven demons out of a person's thinking and mind. And they swept them, cleaned them, put them in order. Salvation isn't just to be cleaned, swept, and put in order. It's that you become filled with something greater that's on the outside. That no matter what you face, no pressure nothing that's happening could ever squeeze the life of God out of you are you with me can I say it says but if that person is empty then they come back with seven of their evil alien friends and the last state is worse than the first state I don't want to just empty my mind of negative karma and energy I want to fill my mind with the very thoughts and energy and spirit of God And so, watch me. The Bible says this. He says, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line. Get me, watch. He says this. He says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. No, he's not just talking about the atmosphere. He's talking beyond the sun, talking beyond the the Hubble telescope. God's thinking is so infinite and large and incredible. Hear me. God has a thought for every problem in your life. God has a thought and a solution to every problem in the world, in the United States of America. Think of anything from poverty. Think of all the evils that are happening around us. God has a solution. But if we would begin to renew our minds, we could tap in to the omni infinite intelligence of God Almighty. He says, My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, my ways are higher than your ways. And so, get this your thinking leads to your ways, your thinking leads to a pattern, and that pattern could end up being a cul de sac where people are stuck for the rest of their life. You don't have to live stuck anymore, God can change your way as you renew your mind and you can get out of that way of thinking. So we want to begin to replace in our mind scripture. I don't know about you. I don't know where you need change. But whatever area that is, I would recommend, why don't you get a few verses and why don't you begin to put them on a post-it note and put it on a mirror. And when you're washing your face, brushing your teeth, right before you go to bed, when you take your face off, ladies, begin to say that out loud. And when the enemy is trying to say, no, you're that old person, out loud, you tell your mind, no, I am not. I am a new person in Jesus Christ. Come on. When you say, well, I don't have the willpower. No, no, no. Philippians 2.13 says he's all the while effectually at work in me. He's energizing me, creating in me. Come on. And he's producing in me the will to obey God. Ah, oh, man. Everyone say, become aware of God's thoughts. Now, I don't know where your Bible's at, but hold it. Whether it's on the phone. Hold it, and if not, just hug yourself right now. (laughs) Online here, please get me. Why don't you find out what God says about what happened to you? 
what's going on in your mind. Because you renew your mind, you will change your life. Find out what God says about money, marriage, relationship, how you're thinking. Is it the way God's thinking? Next one, not only become aware of your thoughts, not only become aware of God's thoughts, I want you to begin to focus. You're going to have to focus if you're going to renew your mind. Uh, I will show you an example of what I mean. A scripture, especially if you've been in church for a bit, many of us who've been in church for a season, scriptures could be in our memory, but they're not in our thinking. And if it's not in your thinking, then it doesn't have power to change you. So several years ago, a church leader hurt me. They really offended me, and I was even more mad at them than I am the tree people. <laughs> In fact, I, I was telling the Lord, I said, hey, you allow your kids to hurt one another? I said, if Jude, John, and J Jake, if they hurt each other like this, I I'm going to put them in a timeout. And he said, how can you allow this to happen? And so I was reading my Bible, and that's why I'm saying I think it takes more than reading your Bible, attending church, and praying a little bit. And I was actually saying, God, I think you need to reprimand them. And so I read a passage of scripture in the New Testament, probably at least four times. And I still, it was not retaining. It wasn't, if you say, hey, what did you read? I couldn't tell you. And then all of a sudden, an intuitive sense came to me. And it was God. And he said, son, stand up. It came through my thinking. I knew God intuitively would speak, stand up. He said, I want you to read the same words out loud. He said, you cannot think about two things at once. And I began to read those words out loud. And I can show you the Bible. It's at my house right now. And that passage has tear stains. Because it was talking about forgive and have mercy. And I didn't even realize that it was saying because he forgave me, I should forgive others. And I was reading it and reading it, but I wasn't absorbing it. Then all of a sudden when I stood up and I began to read those words. And my ears heard those words that negative energy, that evil karma got off my brain in the pattern of my thinking because your thinking leads to a way then all of a sudden God began to change my way. I want my life to change. There is a way that seems right but the end is destruction. I don't want destruction. I want life. You got to focus on the word and bring it out of your memory into your thinking. Does that make sense? Does that make... Okay. One more. Band's coming up. So you'll know that we're ending. All right? Everyone say right living, right living. is produced by right thinking. Don't try to change your life. Change your thoughts and your life will change just naturally. Focus. This is the last thing. And I want to tell you this. Our minds become renewed when it's no longer just a God thought or a Bible scripture. It becomes a part of my thinking. How many of you, now again, in driving a car, once you have a child, something changes. Your way changes. That when you're driving, and even if no one's in the passenger seat, you put on the brakes, you do this. That becomes a way, all right? Can I tell you, when we begin to become aware of our thoughts, become aware of God's thoughts, we focus on God's thoughts, all of a sudden, our way changes. Our life changes. And it becomes an intricate part of me. Now, you see right now, if you come and you try to pull off my finger, it's not going to happen because this other hand's going to slap you. <laughs> Some of us, this word we believe, we say we believe it. Even in courtrooms in America, people put their hands on this book. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? They'll even finish quoting. But you see, if I'm not aware of my thoughts, and I'm not truly aware of God's thoughts, but it has to go beyond that. Because like this morning, I was aware of God's thought. I just didn't want to think them. I kind of enjoyed thinking my own thoughts. But I had to begin to focus. Now get this, I'm going to give you a scripture. In the old King James, it says this, those whose mind is stayed, 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 meaning put it in park and don't go anywhere. Those whose mind is stayed on him, 
he will keep in perfect peace. Meaning, go ahead world, go ahead devil, go ahead negative karma. Your squeeze will not hinder the life and purpose of God within me. My mind is state, my will, my personality, my intelligence. I am fixed on Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you this. In Colossians 3, it says this, verse 1, set your minds and keep them set on things above. Did you get that? You have to set your mind and keep them set. Now, if you could put your mind on something that is above, then we could put our mind on something that is beneath. I want to put my mind, now get this, where it's fixed and where his thoughts organically, I want to say it another way, subconsciously become my thoughts, become my thoughts become my thoughts then you will renew your mind and you will change your life you will renew your mind and you will change your life i want to give you this as we end the bible says that god wishes everyone everywhere would repent now the word repent means this again watch me that you're walking in this way and what is this way god's not the center you may even believe in God, but he's not the sinner. Then all of a sudden, you begin to see he's good. And all the time, he is good. God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. We used to say that all the time in the church in Seattle. Every Sunday, God is good. The congregation would say, all the time. And the pastor would say, all the time. They would say, God is good. We said it every Sunday. The pastor would say, God is good. The congregation would say, all the time. And then he would say, all the time, God is good. I'm going to do it again. God is good. All the time. You will never, ever, ever run to anyone or anything that's not good. So I changed my direction because I had a holy hunch that God was for me and not against me. And then when the devil and earth and life tried to take life out of me and alter my purpose and destiny and my dream, he couldn't. Because God is good. And all the time. And it turned me around. And that's what repentance means, a change of direction. You know another thing it means? A change of mind. You know what we need to renew our minds right now? That God is for me. He is not against me. In the same book of Romans, it says, while I was an enemy of God, he died for me. And he demonstrated his love for me. It says, scarcely will a man die for his friends. But Jesus Christ died for me when I was his enemy. And if he was for me then, he's got to be for me now. So repentance means change your mind. I want to change my mind about God, about myself, about living, about my purpose. I want to live a great life. Come on. Amen. Amen. Change of direction, change of mind. You know what's weird? A change of heart. Man, I love partying. Dear God, before I knew Jesus. I loved it. I loved the club life. Then all of a sudden, that one night, in a church like this, I found out that he loved me. That caterpillar became a butterfly. That little tadpole became a big bullfrog and all I can tell you my mind is trying to catch up to a new kingdom reality that is not me any longer I don't care if I feel it I don't care if they say it I'm a new person in Jesus Christ I have a new identity I have a new identity I have a new identity I am a new person come on no, it's not just culture. No, we're not just doing what our family did. We are going to do who God says us to, I mean, be who God says to be and do what he tells us to do. Can you say amen? amen. Say change of mind. Amen. Say change of heart. Amen. Change of direction. Well, let me tell you, none of it will change, really. Not one thing will change. Do you know you can believe in God and still never change? You know you can kind of accept Jesus to forgive you and still never change. You know where the real change is? is a car key. I know. It looks like a weird car key. But listen to this. My life changed when I gave him the key to my heart. And I said, I'm no longer driving this car. 
you are going to drive the car. One thing I like about this car, it has auto steering for a little bit. And so many times I'll put on Carrie Underwood's song, Jesus Take the Wheel. And I just lift my hands and I sing, Jesus Take the Wheel. You can't do it for too long because then the light comes on and the alarm starts going off. Can I say right now, some of us, you gave Jesus, you let him be in the passenger seat and you're still trying to drive your life. You will have a renewed mind when you make him the Lord of your life. Now, I want to ask this, who has an area in their life they want to change? I'm raising my hand. And I'm giving this area a year where I'm going to actively replace all thought, all thinking, all behavior patterns with new thoughts from the Word of God. And I'm going for it. I'm going to be replacing my thoughts with His thoughts. And I'm going to renew my mind. And I'm going to change my life. How many of you want to change life? Okay, stand on your feet. All of you need an area that you need to change. Now, if you're married... I know your spouse would say, elbow you right now, saying, you know you need to raise your hand. Those of you who are single but you dated, you know your ex would say, you know you need this one. Mm -hmm. How many of you want to change? How many of you tired of being the same old, same old? I do not want to live like hell when I'm going to heaven. I don't want to get to heaven and people go, man, you're a lot nicer up here. I don't want to be so different when I get to heaven. People go, my God, you should have went a lot sooner. (laughs) I want to change now, and it's possible. Renew my mind, change my life. Amen? So if you raise your hand. You say, Pastor Drew, what's one thing that you want to change? Well, honestly, and I'm not joking you. I hate this about me. Why am I like that old toothpaste? Why did the tree cutter get to me so bad? Honestly, does it really matter? You have people in the ICU fighting for their life. And I'm yielding energy over a tree and we already replaced it with two bigger ones. It's like I'm tired of every situation squeezing life out of me. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to manage my mind better. How many of you have a mess in your old mind? Come on, give me a witness. <laughs> One gal went. <laughs> Come on. God can change the way you think. And he will change the way you live. Okay, lift your hands. I'm going to pray. Now, Lord, you know we can't change ourselves without your help. And God, right now, we could have a new heart. And you're in our heart, but God knows you ain't in our brain. And God, I need you to come. And I'm asking you right now. Come and hover over my brain. God, where my brain is dark and my brain and my thoughts and my intelligence and my personality is empty and void, I'm asking you now, hover over my thinking. And God, I want to become aware of how I think and how many times I think it. But God, more than that, I want to be aware of how you think about me and situations and money and sex and recreation and all of living. And God, I want to begin to fix my mind on you. God, I want to focus on it until it becomes an organic part of my personality. God, I want to renew my mind that I could change my life. And I begin to say that right now in view of his mercy. We offer our very bodies as a sacrifice that's living to him, O Lord. We will not be conformed or squeezed into a pattern that's without God, without even thinking about it. God, we're not just going to live life with no resistance. God, we're going to resist any thought that makes us less than who we really are. And we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We dedicate, we make a commitment that 2021, from here on out, we're going to renew our minds. It may take six months, it may take a year, but slowly but surely, little by little, this Jude is being transformed and his mind is going to be a new mind in Jesus' name. And I speak that over. You have a new mind, you hear me? You are going to construct a new mind. 
in Jesus' name. Some of you are going to go have to go back in your mind things that your parents said, things that friends said, disappointment, and you're just going to take those out of your mind and you're going to replace them with the beautiful thoughts of God for you. Now, this is where we end. I'm going to count to three. There's no way, if you're a caterpillar, you can become a butterfly unless you're born again. And really, you could change your mind and still not have your heart awaken. You could change your thought, but still not have your spirit made alive. The only way to break out of a cocoon eternally is by yielding your life to God. And that you'll say he's good all the time, all the time he is good. He is for me, he is not against me. And he's so good, I'm going to give him my entire life. Now I'm going to count to three. And there are people here today, you believe in God, but this time you're going to say, I'm giving him all control in my life. I'm going to yield everything to God. You say, well, no one's going to control me. No, I've seen men control women, women control men, substance abuse control people. Jesus is the only one in the universe who will control you and not destroy you so counting to three you're going to raise your hand you say no I, I'm, I'm going to raise my hand I'm yielding all of my life to God one on three you're going to raise it two three right now raise your hand look how many hands one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven somebody should song, shout cheer Keep your hand raised. One of the things, the reason why I'm making you keep your hand raised is because some people think, well, what would people think? Well, guess what? Doesn't matter. You do your thinking, let them do their trashy thinking. But you're a new person in Jesus Christ. All right? Okay, that was Louisiana. That just went thug. Okay, I need to renew that. Sorry. Let's go. Everyone repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that you have been raised from the dead and I believe that in my heart and I confess it with my mouth and I am saved. My spirit is saved. I am born again. I'm a new person. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to want you to get a red card. It's right in front of you. Fill that out if you raise your hand. Online, click the button. List worship.